Five things in PT core writing that you may be ignoring just like many other students and I got to touch on that today. We're going to cover structure, some key points, paraphrasing, a lot of great things. So stay tuned until the end of this video. Now, the first thing is you're getting the structure wrong. PT core writing is marked by an AI. Now, when you're getting your task two question, which is the email, which has a situation followed up by three bullet points, you got to keep the structure very simple and very neat for the AI to understand that you have addressed everything in the question. So the structure is right there in front of you. It is pretty simple. It's supposed to be five paragraphs. The first paragraph is your purpose, the reason you are writing. This paragraph starts with something like, I'm writing this letter because the purpose of my writing is, or the objective of my writing is, whatever. Then you have three bullet points in the question, right? Mostly you have three, 99% of the times. So for each bullet point, you got to put one body, which means one body paragraph. Hence, you have three bullet points. You need to have three bodies. Each body should answer that bullet point. And finally, you have your conclusion. Now, in the formal emails, your conclusion finishes up with something formal, such as let's set up a time for a meeting or let's talk about this further, get more details, whatever it is. And if it is informal, it's going to be something like lots of love to your family and kids. Hopefully we'll chat soon. That goes at the end. Now for the AI, what you are doing is separating each paragraph. Not only does it help the AI understand the flow of thoughts and gets the, it gets the organization that you are intending for it to read, but you also have marks for structure and coherence. This ensures not only you get that mark for structure and coherence, but also everything goes in a logical flow. Everything is organized and you will be able to answer with good task response because you're literally giving one paragraph per bullet point. That means you're not going to mix them up and skip one or give more detail on one and less on the other. This is the perfect structure for PT core writing task two, and we're covering that more because that has more marks than task one summary, but we'll talk about summary in a second. Let's talk about the word limit. A lot of you confuse it when the question asks you write at least a hundred words, at least a hundred words means more than a hundred, but for some reason they allow you a little room because they know students will make mistakes. You can write as low as 90 words, but nothing less than 90. You will lose marks if you write less than 90 words. And if you write too many, 120 plus, you lose marks as well. This is guaranteed. It is mentioned in the marking scheme. So if you do this, this is a surefire way of losing marks. Hence, you want to be between 90 to 120, but the best range is 100 to 120. Now, 100 at least ensures you are able to address all questions because if you really write 90, some descriptions are missing. So 100, 110 is a really good limit. Okay, next is the question in terms of Canadian immigration. How many points do you need in PT core writing? And this is where a big problem occurs. For a CLB 9, you need 88 points or more. So 88, 89 or 90. These are the three points you need to score a CLB 9. A CLB 9 is what most of you need. Now, some of you are lucky if you need CLB 7 or 8. For each individual profile, make sure to contact your immigration lawyers because everybody's points are different. But most of you need a 9, and that means perfect scores. Literally, that's what it means. You can make one grammar mistake, so the score from 90 would drop to maybe 88, but if you make two, you're risking it. It is literally perfection. It also means perfect structure, vocabulary, everything needs to be really high standards for a CLB9 in PT core writing, which makes it a little tough. Now, if you want to ensure you get that, you need to use AZ Education's PT core writing templates. You need to know our structure, our vocabulary. You need to see some samples and do's and don'ts. We have an exhaustive two to three hour lesson on this in our PT core course. Check it out in the description. It is listed right now at a huge discount. Now let's talk about the summary question. The summary question has its problems too. Luckily, you are given less weight in the summary question compared to the essay question, which means you get more marks or more weight for the next question, which is essay. But a lot of people might lose on PT core writing because they missed or they didn't perform well in the summary question. And that brings me again to CLB9. That is why the slide of this is after explaining this. Look, for CLB9, you cannot afford any mistake. 
So it doesn't matter if your summary question has less weight. If you screw up here, you will still lose your chances of getting a CLB9. Now, I've mentioned here missing key points. Like, what is that? In the summary question, a lot of people lose marks, not because their grammar is wrong or summary is uh, is going astray. It's not nothing related to that. The problem is you're missing key points. Now, the question tells you, make sure you don't miss key points. The marking scheme tells you, make sure you don't miss key points. And what they are, nobody can tell because every time the text is different and every time the key points will be different, there is no formula for addressing that. If you have heard, look at the first few lines or last few lines, that's not correct. Sometimes the key information is in the middle. And this is really subjective. But the AI is told that the in the actual text that you get initially, there are some points that are important. And the best thing you can do is judge that. Now, what you can do is when you look at the sentences, for each sentence, give it a heading. So if the sentence says the technological developments in the 20th century have skyrocketed in numbers and they are globally widespread. What heading, if I think of it myself, what heading can I give this sentence? Well, I could say the increase in technological de developments or advancements. And that heading helps me summarize this a lot. Now, have I missed any key information? No, because I got, I've got the main gist of it. It's the main increase in the advancements and in the number of them. So I got that. Now I'm going to go to the next sentence and get that too and so on. If I can connect multiple sentences and connect these multiple key ideas or key headings, that'll help me summarize things faster because I don't need to use too many sentences. But I am trying to get the key gist out of every sentence and then simply combining them. So what happens is when you're summarizing, a lot of you will miss some sentences and just do the summary on the others because you're trying to have less information. But that's not it. It is key information. Grab something from each sentence and that will be key. Luckily, sometimes two or three sentences might repeat the same thing in the actual text. So that means you can skip doing three sentences for them and just combine them into one. That helps too. But if each sentence has a key point, get those key points together. Finally, how much of the question should we copy? This goes for task one when you're copying words for summary. This goes for task two. And I'll take a task two example here. So in task two, you have an email, right? Now, if you are trying to copy words from here in the bullet points in your writing, is that a good or bad thing? That That is really a key question for PT core writing. Because if you don't, for example, let's say we're talking about partnerships with local businesses right here. In this paragraph, I decide to talk about how we can, um, I, I won't even use the word network. I'm, I'm going to try to use something different. I'm going to say, how we can talk to different people and uh, find common ground in terms of expanding our economic uh, powers. And we can create monopolies, get uh, ahead in the business world together. Now, what I've done here is use a lot of different words such as monopolies, economic growth, and um, I didn't even use words like collaborate. I said together we have common grounds. Now, the AI is dumb. It's a little dumb, honestly. So it might not realize you're talking about partnerships with local businesses. Now, if you give it the words, we should partner with local businesses as straight as it is, there's a risk to that as well. Because while you have now shown the AI that you're answering that bullet point, you're copy pasting the words. So the best thing you can do is use close synonyms. And if you don't know close synonyms, use the same words. Here's what I mean. A close synonym to this would be networking or collaborating instead of partnerships. And with businesses, there's nothing close that resembles businesses. I will just use businesses. So I could say something like we should start collaborating with businesses in the local vicinity. So I'm not going to say local businesses, but businesses in the local vicinity. Now I have added my own touch to it. I have paraphrased at least one word here and I have rephrased this whole expression, which means I get the marks for being creative and paraphrasing using my own words, not copy pasting, but also I have shown the AI, Hey, I am answering this question. So that's an important part. And that's where you need to be careful not to be too creative and at the same time, not to be too copy paste. All right, I hope those things helped out and these five tips will save you valuable marks in your PT core writing exam. Best of luck.